Hi everybody. So I am going to um, read something that I've written since it's the only talent I have or ever have had. And um, I'm still working on Buffalo Flats. I've put it away for a little while so I can see it fresh. Um, and so I've got a couple other things that I'm working on. And one of them is a collection of what I call micro stories. Um, but other people call them other things, flash fiction or sudden fiction. There's all kinds of names. Anyway, they're just really tiny short stories. And this is only the third one I've done. So I don't know how far this will go. Um, but in all of them, um, a character, it's not the same character, um, in all of them, someone finds the world. And so this one is for the little guys. It's, I think this is probably going to be young adult, but this one's for the younger kids and it's called World Class. Little Jimmy was big. He was called Little Jimmy because his dad was called Big Jim, but Little Jimmy was big. He was only eight years old, but once someone guessed him to be 16. You would think that being big would be a good thing. Bullies, for example, wouldn't they leave a big kid like that alone? But as soon as they found out that little Jimmy liked little things, they knew he was all show and no go. The bullies liked to prove how brave and tough they were by teasing little Jimmy. Especially, they liked to tease him about liking little things. He liked babies and puppies and miniature figurines. He collected figurines and played with them at recess when he could have been playing football or baseball. The bully said he was playing with dolls. At school, little Jimmy's favorite thing was the class globe, which was a miniature world on a stand. None of the other kids paid it much attention but little Jimmy liked to give it a spin and stoop down and stare at wherever his eyes landed when the spinning stopped. His teacher would sometimes come and talk to him about the places in the world. She often said that someday when he was grown up, he would go to those places. Today was the last day of school before Christmas. All the other kids were happy about the holiday, talking about what they might get for Christmas. But Big Jim had told Little Jimmy and his mom loudly to make sure they knew he didn't care, that there would be no Christmas presents this year. Worse than getting no presents for Little Jimmy was how sad his mom was about it. The last hour of school, the teachers said they could do whatever they wanted, read or talk or do puzzles. Little Jimmy did what he always did whenever he didn't have to do something. He went to the class globe and gave it a little spin. But something about the globe was different this time. At first, he thought someone had put a light inside the globe because it was sort of glowing like the planet Earth. It was sort of glowing like the planet Earth nightlight he'd got for Christmas the year before. When the bulb burned out of his planet Earth nightlight, his dad wouldn't let him have a new one. You're too big for nightlights, he said. But the class globe it was definitely glowing a little, and, and it seemed almost to be breathing like it was alive. Little Jimmy stood beside the globe, looking down at it. It sat on a table, like always, held by a curved globe stand, like always. But everything else was different. 
the water was bluer than usual and the countries weren't in different colors anymore, just green and brown. There were no words on the countries or cities. Wispy white clouds swirled around the globe. Little Jimmy looked at his teacher, wondering if she could see what he could see. She smiled at him, her chin on her fist. Little Jimmy put his hands on his cheeks as if he had to hang on to something, and that something was his face. The teacher got up and came to him. Would you like to take the globe home with you for the Christmas holidays, she asked. He nodded. I know you'll bring it back safely, she said. Couldn't she see what he could see? She gave the globe a little spin and looked at her wet hand. She licked her finger. Salty, she said, and she smiled and went back to her desk. When the bell rang, little Jimmy picked up the little earth by the stand and carried it carefully home. He put it on his desk and for hours and hours, he watched the clouds swirl about over the continents and tried to figure out how it could be so beautiful. People and buildings and airplanes and everything human were too small to be seen. Little Jimmy liked knowing that he was so small he couldn't be seen on the globe. He liked knowing his dad was too small to be seen. The kids at school were way too small to be seen. Just continents and clouds and the glowing ocean. On Christmas Eve night, he woke up in the middle of the night. For a moment, he thought, presents. And then he remembered there would be no presents that year. He looked over at the globe. Maybe he might see a tiny Santa riding his sleigh around the globe. Little Jimmy didn't see Santa, but then Santa would be too tiny to be seen. Just because he couldn't be seen though, didn't mean he wasn't there. Little Jimmy didn't need a present anyway. He had the whole world after all, and the world had him. He smiled and fell asleep, watching the clouds dancing their dance on the blue oceans and the earth shining like the biggest nightlight ever. The end.